I stayed out all night with friends, and my boyfriend responded by hurting me in a way I never expected now I'm questioning everything. Even though Brandon and I have only been dating for four months, the spectrum of emotions we have shared makes our time together feel both very short and shockingly lengthy. He studies architecture, while I study graphic design at Vell University, we are both sophomores. Due to our mutual passion for design, we initially met in a freshman seminar. From the beginning, our talks were smooth and conversational, discussing our studies and aspirations for the future. We would frequently have coffee while surrounded by class models and sketches. In those early days our relationship felt natural and easy. We spent many nights discussing our projects and ideas, which I always found enriching. Brandon's background was quite different from mine, particularly his strong Catholic faith and conservative views, which initially I found intriguing. He was upfront about his past and his values, including his limited experience with relationships, and his decision to mostly save himself for marriage. However, as we moved past the honeymoon phase of our relationship, I began to feel the weight of our differences more acutely. His traditional views, which I once admired, started to feel restrictive, especially around topics of intimacy and personal freedom. He had been very open about his conservative approach to relationships, but this openness sometimes made me uncomfortable and skeptical about how it would affect our relationship. Our first major challenge came when I committed to a major group project with my friends from the graphic design program. The project named 50 Specimen Shapes was an ambitious plan to create 3D models for various abstract shapes, combining artistic flair with scientific precision. As the deadline approached, my team decided to pull an all-nighter to finish our work. I was excited about the project and shared my plans with Brandon, hoping he would understand the commitment it required. Instead, his response was cooler than expected. He seemed uneasy, not just about the late night but also about me being deeply involved in something outside of our relationship. His discomfort seemed to stem from his religious beliefs which made him wary of the unpredictable nature of creative projects. His reaction left a coldness between us as I prepared for the night. There was a noticeable tension in his goodbye that evening, and even his hug felt forced. It made me wonder if our relationship, built on such different foundations, could really last. Despite this, I headed into the project night full of anticipation, but also concern, not realizing that the events of the evening would test our relationship even further. The day leading up to the planned all-nighter with my friends was a typical Thursday, marked by the usual rush of classes and the added buzz of creative energy that always seemed to spike as deadlines approached. I had spent most of the afternoon in the studio, putting the finishing touches on my part of the project, my mind racing with adjustments and improvements. The vibrant atmosphere was contagious, everyone throwing ideas back and forth, our workspace a testament to weeks of hard work and chaotic creativity. I checked my phone intermittently, noting the absence of any messages from Brandon. It was unusual, given that we often exchanged quick updates or words of encouragement throughout the day. Deciding to break the silence I sent him a text, hoping to lighten his mood and possibly share some of my excitement. Hey busy day here but looking forward to tonight. Wish me luck, I typed, hoping the smiley face would bring a smile to his too. The reply came just as I was gathering my things to leave the studio for a quick dinner before the evening's marathon. Good luck, we need to talk when you have a moment. The message read, void of any emojis that might hint at his mood. The brevity and tone of his text sent a small wave of anxiety through me. It was not what I had hoped to read, especially not today. Dinner was a rushed affair at a nearby cafe, where I sat alone with a sandwich and a cup of too strong coffee, mulling over Brandon's message. The cafe was cozy, a little nook that served as a frequent escape for me from the campus hustle. Today however, the warmth of the cafe did little to ease the chill that had settled inside me. Returning to my apartment briefly, I found Brandon waiting for me, his figure slouched against the doorway of our small shared living room, an unmistakable tension in his posture. As I stepped inside, the look on his face was serious, more somber than I had seen in days. Hey you're home early, I said, trying to sound cheerful. Brandon just nodded, his eyes following me as I dropped my bag and took off my coat. We need to talk about this project night of yours he began, his voice steady but with an edge that immediately put me on guard. I don't understand why you need to spend a whole night working on this with your friends. Doesn't seem like it's just about the project. His words stung, more so because they echoed a deeper distrust that seemed to have been growing between us. It's just a project Brandon, it's important for my course and you know how these things go. We all push at the end to get everything perfect I replied, trying to keep my voice even. Brandon crossed his arms his brow furrowing slightly, it's always about the project isn't it, or something else. I just, I feel like you're slipping away, doing all these things without me. And tonight it just feels like you don't want me around. 
I sighed, feeling the weight of his words and the widening gap they represented. This isn't about not wanting you around Brandon, this is about me needing to do this for my degree. For me, I thought you understood that. He looked away, the lines of his face hardening. I do, it's just hard sometimes, I miss how it used to be with us. There was a sadness in his voice that pulled at me, a reminder of simpler times when our biggest concerns revolved around which movie to watch or what dessert to share on a Saturday night. Now, standing in the dim light of our living room, those days felt like distant echoes overshadowed by the growing complexities of our relationship. I miss that too, I admitted softly, the distance between us feeling more profound in the silence that followed. Dinner ended with an uneasy truce, the issue temporarily set aside but the tension lingering like a stubborn fog. As I grabbed my things to head out, Brandon's voice stopped me at the door. Be safe okay? He said, a trace of the old warmth in his voice that made my heart ache for what we were struggling to hold on to. I will. I promise I responded, offering him a small hopeful smile before stepping out into the cool evening air, the night's possibilities stretched out before me like the sprawling campus pathways, the excitement for the project was still there, but now it was tinged with a poignant mixture of concern and longing for the relationship I was still learning to navigate. The night of the project was set to be intense, a blend of creativity and chaos as we worked against the clock. My friends and I had booked a study room in the university's main library, a space often reserved for late-night cram sessions and collaborative projects. As I arrived around 8 p.m., the familiar sense of excitement and nervous energy filled the air, palpable among the scattered laptops, strewn papers, and 3D materials that covered the tables. The first few hours flew by as we dove into our tasks. Anna, a meticulous planner, coordinated our efforts, ensuring everyone stayed on track with their assigned elements. John, ever the perfectionist, was immersed in adjusting the lighting on our 3D models, creating the perfect shadows that made our shapes seem almost lifelike. My role was to integrate the background graphics I had designed, ensuring they complemented rather than overwhelmed the at 10 p.m. I sent a quick message to Brandon. In full swing here, hope your evening is relaxing. The immediate response I hoped for didn't come, and I pushed the slight worry away, redirecting my focus to the vibrant discussion on color schemes and textures swirling around me. Midnight approached, and we took a brief coffee break. The library's 24-hour cafe was buzzing with other students, similarly burning the midnight oil and the air was thick with the aroma of espresso and the low hum of hushed conversations. I checked my phone again, noting the absence of any message from Brandon. A ripple of concern stirred within me, but I was quickly pulled back into the lively banner of my friends, discussing the latest episode of a popular design reality show. By 2 a.m. the project was shaping up, but the fatigue was setting in. We powered through with energy drinks and the collective adrenaline that comes from nearing the finish line. I sent another message to Brandon, a bit more detailed this time, still working hard, miss you. The read receipt popped up almost immediately, but there was no reply. The silence gnawed at me, making the coffee seem a bit more bitter. As 4 AIM rolled around, we were in the final stretch, adding the last touches to our project. The room was quieter now, the earlier excitement giving way to focus concentration and the occasional yawn. I sent one last update to Brandon, half hoping he'd respond with words of encouragement or at least acknowledge my efforts. Almost done here. Can't wait for you to see the final product. Love you. The lack of response this time felt heavier, more loaded. I stared at the screen for a moment longer than necessary, the glow highlighting the worry lines that had formed between my brows. Finally, around 5.30 am, we wrapped up. Our project, a visually stunning presentation of geometric and organic shapes, stood as a testament to our hard work and collaborative spirit. There was a collective sigh of relief, mixed with pride as we packed up our things. Despite the successful conclusion, my heart wasn't fully in the celebration. The unanswered messages from Brandon cast a shadow over my mood. I arrived home just as the sun was beginning to rise, painting the sky in hues of orange and pink. The apartment was silent, Brandon's side of the bed untouched, indicating he hadn't slept. On the kitchen counter, I found a note from him, went out to clear my head, we'll talk when I get back. The terse note was unlike his usual thoughtful messages and did little to ease the knot of anxiety that had tightened in my stomach over the course of the night. The words so stark and devoid of his usual warmth, felt like a cold draft through the room. It was not like him to leave such a terse message. Sitting at the edge of our bed, I felt the weight of the night's efforts on my shoulders and the heavier burden of an unresolved conflict waiting in the wings. The joy of our project's completion was tinged with a sadness that felt all too familiar lately, a reminder of how distant Brandon and I had become in such a short span of time. As I awaited his return, the excitement of the night faded into the background, overshadowed by the uncertainty of the conversation that awaited us. Brandon returned home late in the noon, the sound of the front door closing a signal that a confrontation was imminent.
I could hear the muffled sounds of his movements as he hung up his coat and placed his keys in the dish by the entrance, each noise echoing slightly in the tense silence of our apartment. The atmosphere was charged heavy with the anticipation of the difficult conversation that lay ahead. He found me in the living room, where I had been staring out the window at the sight escape, lost in thought and dreading his return. As he entered his expression was unreadable, a mask that hid whatever emotions he had stewed in during his hours away. He paused at the doorway his posture rigid, and then slowly approached where I sat. So you were out all night for a project. His tone was skeptical, laced with a bitterness that made me wince. The question felt like an accusation, a prelude to an argument I wasn't ready to have but knew was unavoidable. Yes Brandon, it was for my final project. You know how important this is for my grade. I responded trying to keep my voice steady despite the fatigue and emotional strain. I didn't want to be out so late either, but we had to get everything finished. It's not something I can just put off. Brandon scoffed, shaking his head as he paced a few steps before turning to face me again. All night though. Seems like a bit much for just a project. You could have done some of it at home couldn't you? Why did it have to be an all-nighter? His doubts stung, and I could feel the defensive walls building up inside me. It wasn't just me the whole group was there. We needed to work together to get it all done. It's not something I can control. Everyone was counting on each other. He continued to look unconvinced, his arms folded across his chest as he leaned back slightly against the wall. It just doesn't sit right with me, you being out like that and not even a call to check in. How am I supposed to trust that? The room seemed smaller with each word, the air between us thick with unsaid things and pent-up frustrations. I was so tired from this, so exhausted from the project and the sleepless night. I'm telling you the truth Brandon, I'm too busy to call, but I've texted a lot but you haven't replied. Brandon's gaze hardened, and he let out a long sigh, a sound of frustration and disbelief mixed together. I don't know, it just doesn't feel right. Something about this doesn't add up. The conversation spiraled from there with each of us rehashing old grievances and misunderstandings, our voices rising and falling in a familiar dance of conflict. Despite my attempts to explain the necessity of the night out, Brandon remained skeptical, his trust seemingly eroded by the incident. As the discussion wore on, I felt a profound exhaustion wash over me, not just from the lack of sleep but from the constant battle to justify my actions and intentions. It was draining, this feeling of having to defend my commitment to both my education and our relationship, and as the afternoon light began to fade, so too did my resolve to keep arguing. Finally I stood up, a gesture that paused our heated exchange. I need some rest Brandon, I said quietly the fight gone from my voice. I'm sorry you feel this way, but I've told you the truth. I hope you can believe me. Without waiting for his response I turned and headed towards our bedroom, leaving Brandon in the living room, surrounded by the silence that quickly filled the space I had vacated. The unresolved tensions remained, a silent specter in our home, as I closed the bedroom door behind me, seeking a refuge from the turmoil and a few hours of much-needed sleep. As the gentle colors of the morning light pierced the darkness, I looked forward to a peaceful morning to relax after the strenuous project session. However the sudden ringing of my phone shattered the quiet of our apartment, catching me off guard. It was Brandon. Considering the time and the tense messages we had exchanged earlier, I prepared myself for a challenging conversation, but I was still utterly unprepared for the events that were about to unfold. As the soft hues of dawn broke through the night, I anticipated a quiet morning to unwind after the intense project session. However my phone's sharp ring cut through the stillness of our apartment, startling me. It was Brandon. Given the hour and the strained messages from earlier, I braced myself for a difficult conversation, but nothing could have prepared me for what was about to happen. Hello. My voice was groggy, tinged with sleep and anxiety. The sounds that met my ears were not words but moans, distinct, unmistakable sounds of intimacy. My mind raced as I tried to process the audio assault. Confusion gave way to a horrifying realization as Brandon's voice came through the line, breathy and cruel. Do I wanted you to hear what you've been missing, he said, a hard edge to his whispered words. The background noise didn't subside, it was clear he was not alone. The shock hit me like a physical blow, knocking the air from my lungs. My hand trembled as I held the phone, my heart pounding with a mixture of anger, hurt, and disbelief. How could the man I love subject me to such a deliberate act of humiliation and spite? There was a pause, a soft shuffle, then Brandon's voice again, colder this time. So because maybe now you'll understand how it feels to be unwanted, he said, before the line went dead. The phone slipped from my numb fingers, clattering against the hardwood floor. I stood frozen the echo of his words reverberating in my mind, each syllable a shard of glass in my heart. The pain was sharp and deep, a betrayal that cut to the core of my being. Tears spilled over hot and unchecked as I sank to the floor. The room spun around me, a whirl of dark thoughts and unanswered questions. Who was the woman he was with? 
But more than anything, why would he choose such a devastating way to express his pain? In my shock, I called Anna immediately. She came to my apartment and rushed into the room. She was by my side, her hands gently lifting my chin to meet her worried gaze. What happened? Oh my god, are you okay? Her voice was laced with concern, her eyes searching mine for an explanation. I shook my head, the words catching in my throat. Through sobs, I recounted the phone call, each word punctuated by a fresh wave of tears. Anna listened in silence, her arm wrapping around my shoulders in a comforting embrace. This isn't just about tonight, is it? She murmured after I had finished, her voice soft but steady. There's more going on here, more pain than just this moment. She was right. The incident wasn't an isolated one but a climax of ongoing tensions and unspoken grievances that had been building between Brandon and me. It was the breaking point of something that had been fracturing slowly, painfully, over time. Anna stayed with me as dawn turned today, offering silent support as I processed the initial shock and began to consider the implications of what had happened. The reality of the situation was harsh. Not only had Brandon violated our trust in the most intimate way, but he had also used his actions as a weapon, a way to hurt me as deeply as he felt hurt. We need to talk about this, not just you and me, but you and him, Anna finally said, her tone firm. This can't be brushed under the rug, it's too big, too painful. She was right. As much as I dreaded the confrontation, I knew it was necessary. The foundation of our relationship had been shaken, perhaps irrevocably, and it was clear that things could not continue as they had been. With Anna's encouragement, I found the strength to call Brandon later that day. My voice was steadier than I felt, bolstered by the conviction that I deserved better cruelty he had shown. Brandon, we need to talk I started my words clear despite the tremor of emotion that underlaid them. What you did this morning was beyond hurtful, it was destructive. There was a heavy silence on the other end before Brandon responded. His voice was subdued, lacking the harshness of earlier, I know he admitted and for a moment I thought I heard a hint of regret from him. I was angry hurt, I had no idea how else to show, so I did that. Brandon hurting me like that, making me listen while you, while you were with someone else. That's not a way to solve anything. It's just causing more pain, I continued, my voice firm but shaking with the weight of my emotions. I know, he repeated, his voice low. I wasn't thinking, I just felt so disconnected from you, and I thought, I don't know what I thought. I'm sorry truly. His apology was a start but the road to healing seemed long and fraught with potential setbacks. The trust between us had been deeply damaged and I was unsure if it could ever fully be restored. After the phone call with Brandon, I retreated to the safety of our bedroom. The four walls felt like a sanctuary from the chaos and emotional turmoil that had erupted in our living room. Lying on our bed, I couldn't shake off the deep-seated sadness that clung to me, nor the images of Brandon's face, twisted with accusation and mistrust. My mind spun in circles, reflecting on the spiraling decline of our relationship. It was a cycle tension and misunderstanding that seemed to repeat itself with increasing intensity. I thought back to the early days with Brandon, when each moment together was filled with laughter and spontaneity. Those memories now seemed like echoes of a distant past, a stark contrast to our current reality where smiles were rare and silences were loaded with unsaid grievances. It wasn't just the lack of trust or the painful confrontation that morning. It was the realization that I no longer recognized the man I had fallen in love with. He had become a stranger, one who could willingly inflict pain with such calculated indifference. As I lay there, a mix of exhaustion and despair washing over me, my phone buzzed with incoming messages. Reluctantly, I reached over to check it, finding texts from Anna and a missed call from my sister Leah. I dialed Leah back, needing the familiar comfort of her voice. Hey Leah, I began, my voice cracking slightly. Hey what's wrong? I could sense something was off from your text, she responded, her tone immediately shifting to one of concern. I recounted the morning's events, the call from Brandon, and the painful words exchanged. Leah listened silently, only interjecting to ask clarifying questions. When I finished there was a heavy pause. That's just cruel you know. It's not like you to tolerate this kind of behavior, not from anyone, Leah finally said. Her words firm and straightforward mirrored my own thoughts. It was a reflection of how far I had strayed from the person I used to be, someone who valued self-respect and mutual understanding above all in a relationship. Yeah, I know. I just I don't even know who he was anymore, I admitted, feeling the weight of my own words. I can't keep going like this, it's draining me Leah, it's not healthy. You deserve so much better, Lee replied, her voice soft yet insistent. You need to think about what you really want moving forward, not just for the sake of the relationship but for yourself. Her words sparked something within me, a flicker of determination amidst the confusion. It was a call to reclaim the parts of myself that I had neglected in my attempts to salvage our faltering relationship. I needed to reflect on what I truly wanted, not just drift along in the current of Brandon's moods and accusations. Later that day, I met with Anna for coffee. As always she was a grounding presence, someone who could always cut through the noise and help me see things more clearly. As I sipped my coffee, Anna laid it out plainly, 
everyone sees it you know, you're not yourself anymore, you're always tense, always worrying about how to navigate around Brandon's feelings, when's the last time you did something just for yourself, something that made you happy, her question hung in the air stark and challenging, I didn't have an answer, and that in itself was telling, he's changed Anna, or maybe I'm just seeing the side of him he's hidden all this time, I said, the realization bitter, maybe Anna agreed, her brow furrowed in thought, but more importantly what are you going to do about it, that was the question wasn't it, what was I going to do, the thought of continuing in a relationship where I felt so undervalued, so misunderstood was unbearable, so yet the thought ending things, a stepping into the unknown after all we had shared was daunting, over the next few days I took time to myself reflecting on my values my needs and my future, I thought about the kind of love I wanted, the kind that was nurturing respectful and joyful, it was clear that what Brandon and I had now was far from those ideals, the love had been overshadowed by resentment and pain, a far cry from the partnership I envisioned. I realized that moving forward alone was a better path than staying in a relationship that had lost its way. It wasn't just about finding happiness but about preserving my self-respect and rediscovering the strength I had before the relationship consumed me. With a heavy heart but a clear mind I decided it was time to end the relationship with Brandon. I needed to express my decision, not out of spite or anger but from a place of honesty and self-respect. I hoped that he would release me, that he could see the necessity of the choice I was making. The decision to end our relationship was not easy, but it was necessary. It was a step towards healing, towards reclaiming the joy and peace that had once defined my life. As I prepared to have that final conversation with Brandon, I felt a mix of sadness and relief. Sadness for all that we had lost, and relief that I was finally taking a step towards a future where I could be myself again, free from the shadows that our love had become. With Brandon, the conclusion was just as challenging as I had expected. But beneath all the pain there was a resolve that persisted. I was clear in expressing my demands and the sadness of a relationship that had deviated too much from happiness and respect for one another. As he listened, Brandon's expressions were a mixture of resignation and quiet recognition. Ultimately he comprehended and acknowledged my choice, even though it was evident he was upset and regretful. In the weeks that followed, the immediate sense of relief I felt was tinged with moments of profound loneliness. Our shared apartment, once alive with shared dreams, now echoed with the quietness of solitude. I spent long evenings reflecting on what had gone wrong, turning over the memories, both sweet and bitter. This introspection, though painful was a necessary part of my healing process. Gradually the sharpness of recent wounds gave way to a more profound understanding of myself and my boundaries. I began to reconnect with old friends and my family relationships that had been somewhat neglected became sources of comfort and joy. Their support was instrumental in rebuilding the sense of self that had been eroded in my efforts to save a failing relationship. The knowledge I gained from this period of my life was priceless but difficult to get. I came to understand the value of being honest and open with myself as well as with a partner. I realized the danger of compromising too much and losing oneself in the attempt to keep others happy. I made a self-promise to put emotional fulfillment and respect for the other person before my dread of being alone in a relationship. As I move forward the scars from this experience remain, but they are a testament to my resilience. They remind me that I have the strength to face difficult truths and make tough decisions, that I deserve to be loved fully and without reservation. The journey of reclaiming the joy and peace I once knew is ongoing, but now I walk it with a clearer vision of who I am and what I truly value in life and love. I appreciate everyone listening to and reading my story. I have removed it from the platforms where I published it since I believe the details of what he did with me should not reflect poorly on my accounts. The only page I want to share a tale on is this one. Please leave a comment after hearing the story so I know what everyone thinks. I'll probably read it several times over.